just taking the selfie there for our behind the scenes um, Instagram posts. But um, we're going to explore the nuance implications of 10 bills introduced in Florida's 2024 legislative session, examining their impact on individual freedoms, societal norms, and the ever changing fabric of justice. Let's go, Joel. Welcome to another episode of You Can't Make This Shit Up. This is David. I am Joel. We're your host. This is the Jay in Washington Network. And oh my God, that's a lot to unpack. Uh, let's see. There are going to be 10 bills that we're going to discuss today. And I'm probably off camera. Well, wait, or wait, 10 wait, areas wait, wait, of, of, of uh, legislation. 10, 10 areas of legislation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one is going to be... Uh, homeowners insurance which has been a special session and everything else i don't think anybody has a solution except for david and i you know, we, we we've already said let's just rip the roofs off and start all over is that what we said that's it and then we can start insurance so companies can all come in here with fresh brand new roofs and then you know David, this is a topic that we're never going to solve. It's never going to be. It's never, never going to be solved because there is no will by the legislature to come together, uh, Democrats and Republicans, and have a solution to give relief to homeowners. Yeah, well, you know, it takes two shots to even deal with shingles. I'm, I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> no, it's it is. You're right. It, and I can be humorous on this because we have talked about this we have. for the last we three have. years as and, we've seen the deterioration mm -hmm. of the insurance industry. Right. We, we personally know individuals who have lost their insurance, who are self-insuring their homes, and individuals who are being priced out of their homes because – their insurance has increased astronomically and it's become unaffordable. Well, it, it's not about whether you're going to, it, it's not about uh, if I'm going to be canceled, it's when am I going to be canceled, right? That That's the new problem. And it's just, what do you do if you're prepared for it or not? If you haven't been paying attention, it's a shocker to you. But if it's, you know, been paying attention, you know, it's coming and maybe you have a backup plan, but there is no plan other than the state of Florida taking over our insurance, you know, covering our insurance altogether at this point, at this point, mm -hmm. because we have neglected this topic and paid too much attention, both parties, on things that are not important. So sure. now we have this important issue. Right. So next on the agenda is going to be what, David? Auto insurance. Um, let's just just like property insurance. Let's just cancel you know, it all. It, Hey, let's just know, drive uninsured and, and make it all on the responsibility of the driver. No. Scary because we already know there's a lot of people driving uninsured. You see, you, you, well, you, you think see, we have the highest... you hear about, you know, people fleeing car accidents because exactly. they're either without a license, hit and run, hit and run in the state, or don't have insurance, hit and run in the state of Florida. Um, whether it's a, whether it's a vehicle hit and run, whether it's a pedestrian, a bicyclist is out of, uh, you know, is, is the highest, I think we have the highest, uh, state in, in that pedestrian. In, in pedestrian, uh, Orlando is one of the top three in the yeah. state because people are fleeing because they don't have insurance and don't know what to do. And Florida is a no fault insurance state. Right. So you get into an accident, it may have been your fault, but in Florida, it's no one's fault. And well, it's Florida, Morgan and it's Morgan and Morgan's fault. Yeah, because I, I was just about gonna, to mention it's the it's the personal it's, injury lawyers it, that are being blamed for high interest, uh, I'm sorry, high insurance rates when we know that tort reform is not the issue. Well, it the, the problem the problem here, David, is perception. If Dan Newland and hadn't, you know, I'm gonna use him for example. Uh, didn't uh, make it like a lottery, then the insurance companies could actually deal inside a courtroom and get good settlements for people um, instead of it looking like, okay, they're just out ambulance chasing. Because, listen, there are cases that need millions of dollars. But sure. we don't need billboards trying to make it look like the lottery. And I, I'm sorry, the, I think the bar, it, I, I think the bar association fails 
in this because they should go after these attorneys and say, come on, let's make this not a lottery. Let's make mm-hmm. this an important issue where people don't just reach out to lawyers for money. They reach out for the health and get the extra money that's necessary. You know, the, this money goes into this money goes into is is not like pocket money. You're talking a lot of these millions of dollars settlements are going into you have to redo your entire house because you're handicapped and you got to get in and out of a house that you need an elevator or you need lifts and you need this and you need transportation and it's a lot. It's not a lottery. And that's what should be sold as why insurance is important. Right. It's not important because how much money you make. It's important because it's life-saving, life-changing a- accident. You need that money to change your ha- your lifestyle. Okay, I'm I'm off my I'm off my tangent. So let me move this. Uh, I'm, I should have this up here. But so healthcare is another area of um, legislative uh, action that uh, this particular session is addressing. Um, again. Uh, increasing Medicaid um, or Medicare um, to more residents uh, is on the table, um, which seems to Staying probably hot. be on uh, being dead on arrival. Being hostage to the federal government, that's not going to get passed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's legislation to increase or attract more medical professionals to Florida. Uh, we are one of the fastest growing states in the union and one of the oldest uh, states in the union as far as the median age or average age, uh, well, not average age, but the median age of uh, residents. Isn't that why healthcare uh, insurance companies are like mostly in Jacksonville? Like one of the reasons that Headquartered, headquartered in sure. Jacksonville because you know old people live in Florida and they need insurance and that's how it started. Whether they're, I mean, that's the only insurance that's in the state that's actually flourishing. I mean, right. everything else is running away. Now that now that month passes, that another new clinic or or hospital is being built, you know, here in Central Florida. So Chewy's, so Chewy's on Alafaya is now going to be a healthcare center. They tore it. They just built it. Now they've torn it down. And they're building a health center. There's a new health center being built on the corner of, there's a new one being built on the corner of uh, Red Bug, where Red Bug turns into Mitchell Hammock. Uh, they put a, put a whole brand new hospital in Oviedo. Listen, the healthcare industry is building these uh, standalone ER clinics now. Um, Evan Health, if I remember correctly, um, purchased the land where um, Holy Land. Um, yep, the Holy Land experience is now land experience. is now owned by Advent Health, um, and they're building a facility there, yep. uh, right off of I four and um, Conway, right? If and, I remember correctly. And if you're not familiar with Advent Health, Advent Health is uh, headquartered out of Texas. Advent Health uh, purchased uh, Florida Hospital, which uh, was also a Christian uh, Christian uh, based religious hospital. So. Mm-hmm. Another area of uh, discussion in uh, this session is the use of a substance called kratom. K R A T O M. Yeah, I left uh, mine. I left mine at home today. I would. I would like. Sure well, I've got <laughs> samples of kratom right there on the stove that I cooked up myself. <laughs> we, I made. We, we, I made Danielle look. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, we, we are totally joking. No. Yeah. So kratom. Yeah. I, I had never yeah, heard. Yeah. I had never heard of kratom. Uh, kratom, kratom is an anti- kratom. kratom. Yeah, it, it's a substance it's, it's, derived from the dried leaves of a tropical Southeast Asian tree that in recent years has become popular in part because of its purported opiate like effects. Hundreds of people have died in the state from kratom related overdoses in the past decade. Well, I, opium is a, is a huge problem. Uh, it's it's you know in the court system right now um these these uh, drug companies that you know pushed uh, the opioids onto the public and especially through the va system um 
it got people hooked and knew they were going to get people hooked and they're now dealing with it. It's just like the tobacco industry, but it's not, it's too, it, it's too late, right? It's too late. The problem exists and we have to be dealing with the, the issue of uh, rehabilitation. We need to be trying to transition people off of these drugs and they're going to find substitutes. So um, hopefully Whatever this new substance is, I'll I'll learn more about it uh, now that it's on the legislative agenda. Right. Um, Allegedly, it's available at like gas stations or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but it seems like it's something that has been able to kind of go under the radar. Well, that's exactly how everything starts, right? You you find something new that you know you introduce it. Do you think people in the in, in Europe were smoking before they you the, before the Americas were found? Of course. No, they weren't. They weren't smoking because there was no. They didn't know what tobacco truly was. But weren't there other things that? No, they weren't smoking. It wasn't until it wasn't until the you know we found out that you could actually smoke this stuff. The Indians were smoking it, and that's how it ended up being one of Europeans' oh, biggest imports. You know, it's like okay, hey, Europeans were not smart enough to be smoking. They were they were too busy doing other drugs, <laughs> and, and getting and getting the herpes and the you know the. You know the things you the things that people died of were venereal diseases and stuff like that because they were poor and poor people. What do they do? So next, that's a true statement. Area right? you of can, my all the discussion in the legislative <laughs> session is the prison system in crisis. Allegedly, Florida's prison system we don't is have in enough prisons and in need of billions of dollars in renovations. No, we don't have enough prisons. We we need to build new ones, that's all. That's no no. I'm joking guys. Mercy. I, listen, the prison system has been broken. The prison system has been overwhelmed for a long time. We we need to I've always said we need to really get into the laws in, that we create and start really looking at eliminating, you know, mandatory sentences. We we need to start, you know, taking some of the burden off of the uh, off of the uh, legal system by making you know streamlining some of these laws uh, and and then really pushing to the max on law on on real hardcore crime so some of the petty stuff is just money makers like uh, traffic courts and are overwhelmed and you know if we didn't have so many different uh, rules and regulations we how, how about taking one moment to look at all the legislation we have and say, like, in today's society, how important is that to charge, you know, somebody with a small amount of drugs uh, to be going to jail longer than somebody who's, you know, run somebody over and killed them? Like, that's that to me is so. You know, so um, justice reform or criminal Criminal reform is huge. I, I think that's one of the things that Donald Trump did right when he started, you know, going into the, you know, the, to the system and saying, you know what, these mandatories are out of control. These, some of these people are in jail for things that they, sh you know, like almost life sentences for things that shouldn't be life sentences. I mean, right. but yeah, if we would have a real true look at the, uh, the reform, our prisons wouldn't be in such bad repair. Um, we need to look at the what private uh, uh, government practices we have out there because some of uh, the Democrats you really think that that's a money maker. I know that uh, to some extent, state of is. state of Massachusetts dealt with it by outsourcing their prisons by sending people to Texas. I think that was destroyed family uh, family life. So there's all kinds wow. of things. There's all kinds of things that happen in the legal system we don't know of. Right. They don't have people in the system themselves. But, hey, somebody's got to deal with it, and maybe we should have some people really look at it. Right. Uh, Senate Republican leaders want to ease public school regulations and put them on a level playing field with private schools. So uh, I just saw uh, in my news feed that uh, the Florida Senate passed some legislation to deregulate uh, the public school system. So what this is saying is that they want to lower uh, the standards uh, of education here in Florida because, and I base this on the uh, very famous, infamous, however you want to say it, um, Orlando Signal 
expose on private schooling, charter schools, things like that, that they did a couple of years ago and showing how the system is in, unbalanced and that there are lower standards to these charter schools and public uh, and private schools and so forth and so on compared to what's required in the public school system. Public school system, dealing with the public school system is uh, you'd have to eliminate the federal regulations because the federal reg regulations are what really. Like which one? Okay, so if a teacher is teaching a uh, disabled child, uh, a child with disabilities, uh, spends more time doing paperwork for the federal government and for the parent that the parent doesn't even show up for because the child is usually neglected by the parent because they're using the school systems as a crutch. So I can't tell you how many hours my mother as a uh is that as, the, as a teacher would spend doing federal mandated paperwork but that was in in, in it, massachusetts right that's a federal that's federal rules they have to here in florida this, uh, they're doing the they you're talking about the, the, IE, the ieps they're doing the IE, individual education plan right, they're doing ieps a, but listen it goes it's, beyond the it's IEP. education plan it's a individual education plan where they try to make sure that the child is in the classrooms and they have to coordinate with the teachers they have to this is a lot more than just an iep the, the paperwork involved in it takes the teacher out of uh, out of teaching and puts them as an administrator there should be administrator. there should be there should be there should be teacher there, there should be administrator listen Joel, i used to collaborate on ieps when I worked in the public sector in Illinois. I used to help craft them. Okay, so great. and there were other professionals so who how about, would help craft so, the so IEP. How about, so how and about, the teacher was, you know, would give their you know impressions of the students and so forth and so on, and and help collaborate on it. But it was a collaborative effort. At least in Illinois, it was. It wasn't the expectation that the teacher would sit there and, and who creates and do it, all and do who, all this. And and that's the case, right? That's like saying, okay. This is the expectation, but what is the end result? The teacher will end up trying to get everything accomplished so they don't lose their job. Well, aren't there para paraprofessionals who are uh, who are also involved um, in the implementation of an IEP? And if how you many, have, if and, you have and, an IEP, right, it, it, it's and, a requirement and, for having other professionals involved. Correct. But how much involvement are they doing? Look, there's so many pieces to the puzzle that is it being completed is it got to be completed in a timely manner all yes. these different things correct but the biggest problem the biggest problem i have is you do all that work for an individual education plan and guess what the parent doesn't show up and the whole reason you have it is because the parent is supposed to be in the i don't think process. that's in all cases i the majority of cases as a representative of the state of illinois when we had guardianship of a child it was my responsibility to show up on behalf of the guardian's office and because the government report that report. information to the court and to the attorneys representing the state and the parents. Okay. But the parent, now if the parents were involved, which on occasion they were involved, they would be there despite the fact not having guardianship of their kid. I just took just the, my experience. I, I just took the IP uh, for an example of the amount of hours it can take you 40 hours. It could take you 40 hours, you know, a week to work and takes you 40 hours to put together. I know, I've, been there. I've been and there. If it's, you have to, if hard. you're a teacher and you're taking care of 10 children, you have 10, you know, 40 hour work week uh, jobs to do to get that out. You get that to the, you know, how many people it's not are involved? just the teacher who puts together the IEP. I'm talking about federal regulations need to be removed. States need to start dealing with this. We need to really revamp the, you know, get the federal government. It should be a our, national standard. No, there shouldn't be a national. It standard. should be a national standard, so that there, there is at least a minimum that states need to meet. So you need a socialist. You, you need a socialist program to make sure that everybody's getting the same exact education when everybody learns differently. I said a minimum. Everybody learns there differently. There should be a standard. So you're gonna have you're gonna have a standard for three different types of learning st styles. There should be a minimal. You should be able to rewrite and do some some basic. So your minimum standard. So your minimum standard for somebody who, you know, who, who is a 
At audible, fifth grade, you it, should be able to a, read at a, at a fifth grade level. At, at eighth grade, you should be able to, you know, uh, do math at a certain level. You know, and, 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 and when you graduate from college, you should be, not college, from high school, you should be able to at least balance a checkbook. So why so so why is a newspaper written at a sixth grade reading level? Because that's where most Americans are. Because you, 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 you said that's they, the truth. Because they didn't have a standard. You used to have every single kid in the same classroom. And they Not were, everyone's going to succeed. I'm saying, there are going to be some of us who are going to fall through the cracks. Correct, because you've got three different learning styles. So the, education is a tip is a very interesting place where you can't just pigeonhole and say one size fits all. No, no one's saying that. I'm just you saying just there should be a set standard. If you don't meet that standard, you just don't meet that standard. Not all of us are meant to, you know, meant to have you know one hundred and forty one. David, David you know, everybody IQs wins, or or. Or you're, or you're you're in the or party. You're, in you're, you're in the party of everybody wins. How can you say that? You're you're just you're alienated half your party right now. <laughs> get used to it. You're gonna say, oh, we should get. And used then to you it. should and then you should say this. It should be testing too to make sure that people get to you know the the school. Of, <laughs> at, at, right. <laughs> Next area, artificial intelligence. Why they want to tackle artificial intelligence is beyond me. I understand because they can't touch your intelligence. Exactly. So they need to go after something. Else. I understand if, uh, for particularly for us, if we're going to use AI generated um, images or 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 text or video audio in a um, campaign propaganda piece, then we should. You know, disclose um, that you know AI was instrumental in creating this this particular piece. Uh, okay. But, however, if especially it makes certain statements that questions that puts in questions facts about a particular candidate or a particular issue. I, I think anytime you use AI, it's just like using. Uh, it, it's just like using somebody else's text. Uh, AI, AI that, put together these uh, show notes. Well, and you could tell. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, uh, if you write me an email and you ask me how well I'm doing, I'll say, okay, which AI did you use to write this email? Because that's typically been a foregone conclusion that we've eliminated. You know, I hope this finds you well. But mm -hmm. there's not an AI program that doesn't have that first line if you write me a poem and it has certain words in it i will automatically know that you used ai because there are words that you know intertwined if you use the word intertwined in a poem right. i guarantee you it's never been used prior to the ai world <laughs> we 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 should leave most of these ai issues in my opinion to at the federal level and let you know the feds come up with laws that guide you know the use of AI and then but we're already having but, but here's the thing David we're already having trouble now with the fact that plagiarism is, you know every sentence has probably been used somewhere along the line but now we have plagiarism uh, you know we have these programs that look for plagiarism and all of a sudden we're charging you know professors and and and, and uh, presidents of universities with plagiarism uh, because they didn't use the proper, um, mm -hmm. you know, AP, you know, the, the, the AP style, or, you know, they didn't, you know, give credit to the proper person. So I think when one thing is when you're using AI, a good standard would be to give credit to the AI. Um, if you're using chat, just let people know that, that you used it. Look, we're not like you said you're not afraid to say that you used it in the show notes but no. we're not using verbatim the ai that produces it either right. we're, we're looking at it going hey guess what david i did this and it, this is totally wrong because at least we know our history and we're going to check our facts exactly another area that our legislators are going to address are a change in child labor laws and the uh, Lawmakers are looking to allow some teenagers to work longer hours on school days and in hazardous professions, resembling a push in several other states that will roll back child labor protections. Yeah, I want my roof replaced by 12, 16-year-olds instead of uh, four 
uh, for Mexicans, uh, and um, you know, I, this is this is crazy. No, I'm I'm, I'm saying that in a, in a very sarcastic way. Look, I want them to be safe, right? I want our children to be safe. I want our our workers to be safe. I believe that there is a role for young people in these professions. I think there's that young people have been locked out of the uh, job industry uh, corporately because it's, it's just too risky to take them on. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think this is a good place to look because we have eliminated too much of the um, schools that treat uh, the trade schools. Uh, If we still had trade schools where these young people could work very safely in an environment to learn electri- uh, ele- electricity, to learn plumbing, to learn uh, construction uh, in, in those ways, we, we wouldn't have this legislation. We, we, we would have educate, right. we would have internship, uh, we would have, no, I'm not, I'm using the word intern, it's not intern. Right. Given the fact that there's a supermajority of uh, Republicans in the legislature and the powerful lobbyist groups behind this this legislation it it'll likely will pass i'm just hoping that uh the minority party has the ability to input some type of protections uh to ward against exploitation and uh, occupational hazards to um young people uh, who do enter the workforce uh, due to the ability of uh of this of this uh, particular legislation or laws that are are being proposed, it, it's it's going to happen. I don't think the Democrats are the ones that necessarily are the savior to legislation with safeguards. I think parenting. I, I think parenting is a lost cause right now. And and if our legislatures ha- our legislature has to find ways to employ more young people by removing legislation uh, restrictions. Some of these restrictions are over the top anyways. Right. A parent knows how long their kid needs to study. A parent right. knows what types do of they? jobs. Do they? Uh-uh. If they haven't? When they, were, when they were in school? Listen, I had it, when we were younger, we had jobs at 16, and we had opportunity to find jobs at 16. The limitation on jobs at, at a young age nowadays is it's, it's overwhelming. Right. And of course, there are two issues that are being addressed in the legislature that we have uh, kind of uh, discussed ad nauseum. Guns and abortion. No, they're not going to tackle guns and abortion, are they? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, they are. Are no, we? <laughs> no, they're not going to. Okay, I don't understand. Why Why would they would want to deal with guns? Ron, Ron DeSantis to... wants to make it able to purchase a gun, you know, day of no waiting period or anything like that oh cool so let's see we we have so david and i are going to invest in a uh a handgun dispenser it's going to be a vending machine you can find it at any one of your 7-eleven stores uh wawa it will it, you just walk in and you put in you, you put in your 50 dollars and you get uh, 10 rounds. You put in uh, $150, you can get a 22. If you put in uh, $350, we'll give you a 45. Um, you know, we, 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 we'll even make sure that we have our, we'll even make sure that we have our 3D printers printing them so that they can get through security. <laughs> DM us, DM us, contact us through our socials and so that we can discuss our business plan with you. And uh, we are looking for investors, angel investors, all type of investors in this business venture. That's where we're heading. You all know how I feel about guns. Everyone should have one. There should be no limitations. I know that's not the typical liberal view, but hey, that's the direction we're going in. This is the wild, wild west all over again. Joel. Okay. Just make sure that the sticker, just make sure that we have the federal sticker on the gun, right. on the machine. <laughs> but but for, for our gun enthusiasts, John, Joel, check this out. What I just learned. You know how there's these, uh, you know, uh, gun buyback programs that the uh, law enforcement have. I just realized the legal definition of a gun is just the a certain part of the gun, not the whole gun. And so, 
you could take the stock off. Uh, is that what it's called? Stock and, and another piece. But there's a central piece that's considered a gun, and that piece can be the barrel. Just, is it the barrel? I can't remember, but... So if you just bring the barrel in, you should probably be good because that's the only thing that's actually going to allow the the dangerous portion, just because the bullet has to be released through the through the uh, bar through the barrel, the chamber. So I would I would assume the chamber is the only part of the gun that's actually right, and that's considered the fire or the fire or the firing pin, the firing mm -hmm. the the firing mechanism doesn't really it can be changed out. So so when people surrender their guns. Uh, or you know, the guns are turned in for a crime and they're destroyed or whatever. Make sure you look at David's uh, definition of the gun, so you only have to bring in whatever it is. Because if it's the barrel, the if it's the barrel, I'm going to give you every barrel right. I can because I can craft one of those in my my sleep. And that's where I'm. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. That there are kits available that you can buy the two pieces that are not considered part of the firearm are available, and then you could get the other piece on the aftermarket somewhere else and then create a whole new weapon listen david I, or it, a whole new firearm we use the actual right term weapon like it, it, a firearm gun right. it, it's just it, it the, the tool is is a weapon so right. like in the army we would say you know well i won't go there but you know you would de definition of a weapon and a gun were two different things mm -hmm. right. use your gun with uh, relationships you use your weapon for actual fighting <laughs> there, and, and we're and when people are thinking when it's promoted that okay these guns are off the streets technically they're really not off the streets when you can purchase these kits and recreate a gun or a firearm or a weapon and they're right back on the streets so if you're if, if you're if you're watching our show and and you you are commenting or something like that i'm going to put a question out there for you to see if you're paying attention how many serial numbers are on a gun mm -hmm. and if there are if there aren't multiple if there aren't multiple serial numbers where is the serial number printed because that would be the only piece that would need to be turned in because it's the only identifiable mm -hmm. piece to your, right. to your weapon so in the comments comment yeah subscribe and look, answer our trivia question for the day and see if we can figure that one out. And I will reference the um, New York Times um, podcast post uh, in regards to what I learned about um, these buyback programs and whatever. But uh, I found it very interesting that, you know, a firearm legally is just a certain portion of the gun mm -hmm. and not necessarily the whole thing. Well, I... We we could have a whole conversation on this because like we're talking about how do we, you know, the government started going after ammunition because we found out that the stockpiles of ammunition and they weren't regulated and that people have tons of ammunition purchased, uh, but like that wouldn't have caught my my family necessarily in 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 our in our, our sportsmanship because we never purchased a full bullet like we reloaded all of our bullets if we purchased bullets at all it was we reused that case over and over again until it couldn't be used again we refurbish them we you know my dad was my dad's a true conservative we we did not spend money on anything we did not spend money outside of <laughs> anything that couldn't be if it could be redone it was redone so thank you very much for joining us on this show uh i am excited to talk about these legislative uh, decisions and Thank you, David. This great topic. Thank you much. Please like, share, comment. We love to hear your comments. We are your political innovators here at Jane Washington. Thank you, John DeMaria of Seventh Legion Multimedia. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of our community. Remember, we want to hear what you have to say. Bring your facts, not your feelings.